What is up everyone? Today is going to be the first of my beginner guides since re kind of restructuring my channel and I'm going to start with the newest character to be added to Smash Ultimate and that is Pyra slash Mithra. So what I want to do in general with these is break it down into a couple of sections being neutral, advantage, disadvantage, and combos basically and that's gonna and maybe like tips like extra tips and tricks right? Because uh, I think that that is just a really easy way to go about it. Again, my first videos for each character will be beginner guides, so they're not going to get too intense. Uh, they're basically just going to talk about simple combos, basic mechanics, and basic game flow. And if y'all want an intermediate video, you have to let me know in the comments whether or not you liked the information. But with all that started, you won't see my face anymore. Let's get into the video. So first, I'm just going to talk about a brief overview of the character. Uh, first off, I think this is the better one. I think Mithra is a lot better than Pyra. She's obviously significantly faster, has more varied combos, and just has a better neutral one because she's faster and two because of the first move I want to talk about in neutral which is going to be Nair. Uh, just in general obviously there are two characters so I will be going over Mithra's version of whatever I'm talking about and then Pyra's uh, and then if they have any swapping in between them I'll kind of be talking about it from the perspective of the first one. So Mithra is so annoyingly fast. She is in my opinion applicably the fastest character in the game or maybe you know actually coincidentally the character that it gave me off of random Fox is the other one in contention. I think these two characters applicably play the fastest. They have great dashes, they have short jumps, great fast falls, and good rising and falling aerials. Uh, I think this character obviously has a sword, so her neutral is already going to be pretty good, but then coupled with the speed and the damage output this character has, it gets really scary. So in neutral, what are you going to be looking out for? Of course, with her speed, you, ha you make people make decisions very quickly, whether it's to attack, whether it's to try to meet you in the middle of your dash if they think you're going to like approach and do a down tilt or something like that. And of course, using her speed, you can kind of just kind of back dash and see what your opponent wants to do. If they commit, you can either get a dash grab in or of course a really big dash attack. Like, did you see how quickly that hit? Look how far away I am. That's insane. That is a ridiculous amount. That's like faster than Min Min could cover that area. So that is just really good in general. Her whiff punish game is great because she's really fast. So her dash grab becomes good. And then of course her dash attack, if you recognize the situation fast enough, can just lead to knockdown. If you want to be aggressively pressing buttons, the things you generally want to do with this character are run up down tilt because one, it like it's just it's just fast. But like this move is just fast, and it's a combo tool, and it can lead to just really simple combos that put you in advantage and uh, really let Mithra shine. Like situations like that happen all the time, or even down tilt, like F tilt. I'm pretty sure works. Or that works. Like you can basically down tilt into whatever you want. You can down tilt into there. Uh, you can down tilt into up tilt, you can down tilt into up air. I don't know if that's a true combo, but it feels like it. And then, of course, when she gets the hit, because of her speed, as I kind of mentioned in her neutral, she's just gonna like be uh, under people, making them hit buttons because she has a sword, and then it's really non-committal because she's such a fast faller, so she can up air, fall, and if they didn't get hit or they were too far, then you still have this kind of situation where they're above you, and then you can just like dash under them and get a grab or dash under and get a dash attack, or dash under and get a down tilt. One of the best things about her, and the reason that in my opinion she is like definitively 100% better than uh, Pyra is Foresight. Because a lot of characters, or rather a lot of sword characters can struggle with zoners because you just don't have the range to get in and you don't necessarily have the speed. Of course, Mithra, very fast. And Foresight allows you to get huge punishes, which can be death three kills, which is why even though quote unquote Pyra can't kill, she still kills pretty consistently because things like Foresight can allow her to get in advantage more frequently than most other characters, and it can lead to literal kills. Like even spot dodges, if you're already in the corner and you want to keep them in the corner, it is so good. There are ways to hit people for doing rising aerials, it's just really, really hard for opponents to respect Foresight while also still playing with their game plan, which is one of the reasons I think Mithra is like broken. And of course, for her aerials, the main thing you're gonna do in neutral is Nair. This move is really, really good. It's huge, it can anti-air people, it can air to air people if your opponents jump, and it kind of combos into its, uh, it doesn't combo into itself, but it does combo. Like very basic confirms, and of course, 22.7 isn't the most overwhelming amount of damage for the amount of moves I did, 
but it's still going to be good. I'm gonna switch off of Fox because fast fallers are a bit special, so let's go to a more generic character. Once you learn how to see which side uh, of Mithra the Nair is going to send, this move becomes absolutely amazing. You can even like loop multiple Nairs together and get some ridiculous combo strings. I'm not gonna say everything that I'm doing is true because again, not a, a, I'm not a main of this character, so I don't 100% know. But when I played her, uh, it just seems like a really overwhelming move. It's not, it's like a slightly worse Palutena Nair, so like it's still one of the best Nairs in the game probably. It's just, it just sometimes plays the game for you and it's just, it's so good and it can lead to so, so much. So honestly, that's my favorite move in neutral, but also run up down tilt is really good. Of course, then you do have things like dash attack, although it's pretty committal, so you shouldn't be doing that in neutral unless you see your opponent press a button. And then of course you have like grab. Universal option, just good. So after neutral, let's say you get one of these hits. How are you going to combo? Well, at zero, as I kind of mentioned, you generally just want to get your opponent above you so then you can play the kind of slower advantage games, which is really, really good. You can also do down tilt into Nair, which as I kind of showed already when I was talking about Nair, you can get longer combos after this, which can lead to just a lot more damage. And then of course at 0% if you get a grab, you can do things like down throw up air, down throw forward air. Uh, it really depends on uh, if there are platforms there and like kind of percents, but at 0%, generally you can just do down throw double up air and get your opponent pretty far above you. If there's platforms, you can even extend it more. Uh, but this is generally what I do when I play this character, is just simple, good damage, and then you get them above you, which I will get into advantage next, I promise. There are of course even simpler combos, like instead of down tilt, up tilt into aerial or whatever. The interesting thing about Mithra is I feel like she's probably the best sword character on FD because of just her blatant speed, because she is so much faster than other sword characters that she can kind of just play away from people and whiff punish them in a way that other sword characters can't, but her combo game is significantly better on platforms. Because platforms can allow her to land after doing full hop aerials, the combo routes can get actually ridiculous. Let's get Mario on the floor. So again, even the simple combos can kind of lead into extra damage and be even higher, and sometimes that just kills because your opponent is just so high up. Especially on like Yoshi's story, you can just get really, really early kills. Again, are there more combos with things like forward air and back air? Yes, but I think uh, back air is kind of an awkward move to use in general. So I would definitely recommend learning how to do like the basic combos and just play with the speed of this character before you really worry about uh, optimal combos with like the back air fast falling stuff into a B. Like it works, but it is quite, uh, it's definitely more advanced. Like, you can get some damage with this character. It's ridiculous. And of course, one of the best things about Mithra in general is because her moves are all so fast, you can still get combos even at higher percents. Like, you know, down tilt, up tilt into up air, which I showed earlier, still works at 50. Down tilt into up air works for, I don't even know how long. It is so long. Like, I can even, damn, 85, I can still do this. Like, that's ridiculous. Even things like down tilt up smash work, which is, again, maybe not gonna get a kill, because up smash isn't particularly strong, but still it's very, very good. And of course, while Mithra doesn't necessarily have a lot of kill confirms, there are some niche ones with like Lightning Buster and stuff. But the thing is, she's so fast that she can just find kills either from edge guarding because she can go a little bit deep in terms of forward air, or of course she can just, you know, with punish with forward smash because she's so fast she can just force people to get up when she wants or to be where she wants and then she can just get forward smash. She's just so fast. And of course, if you are struggling, you can of course go to Pyra where everything kills. At a high level slash like top level, you don't really need to go to Pyra because you will eventually get the kill just by advantage state. Uh, but I understand at lower levels, if y'all want to uh, just switch to Pyra to make it easier for you, that is totally fair and totally just understandable. Just make sure you don't fish too hard for down or up smash, okay? So Mithra's advantage state is actually pretty self-explanatory because she's a sword character. Swing at people with your giant sword. It's not a giant sword, but swing at people with your sword once you get the hit and use your amazing jumps and amazing mobility to keep people in disadvantage. Again, people can swing down, they can air dodge, but a lot of times, air dodge, I don't know why I said it like that, uh, but a lot of times if you get these hits, Mithra is so fast that you can just punish your opponent that, I, that looks you can just punish your opponent for basically being anywhere because they try to swing down and they try to air dodge and you, you throw out the up air that makes them air dodge, right? Like you do this and they air dodge that, that up air that totally hit. 
So pretend this up air hits and they air dodge, and you can just punish the air dodge with a forward smash, or with a side B, or with anything else. Like, because her moves have so little cooldown, if you understand when to fastball the aerials and when all her auto cancel stuff is, she can just pressure super hard. Of course, she has the great zone burst of dash attack, which is incredible because it's, it, again, it's just so far. I showed it earlier, it is so far. So if people are drifting away, you can either run up and nair, run up and F-tilt, run up and you can try to like foresight if you think they're gonna swing, uh, and just get all this damage and all of these follow-ups that, uh, you know, even though she might not do as much damage in a true combo as a lot of other characters, she does get extended advantage states, whether it's edge guarding or whether it's just spamming up air and catching people's landing into like nairs and you just keep going and like, it's so good and she just, keeps it going basically for forever as long as you don't overextend into a combo that doesn't actually exist because that definitely happens and it will allow people to get landings when you kind of shouldn't be letting them. She's so fast that she can basically play the game for you. You can just go, oh, I see where they are. Hit the button that is good for where they are and that's all you have to do. You can react very simply to air dodges. You can react very simply to them throwing out buttons. This character just has it all because they're still a sword character so they're they have the ability to wall people out, except for necessarily like bigger sword characters, like Corrin or Min Min or something like that, but they have the ability to wall people out and hit people for going basically anywhere on state. Honestly, for edge guarding with Mithra, I would probably just kind of limit it to right next to the ledge with like very simple, like at most, you know, double jump out, like double jump in place forward airs. Because her edge guarding isn't the greatest, she is a fast faller, so uh, she can kind of like jump high, but in terms of going low, a lot of things are very risky. Like, if you ever like run off and do a neutral beat, you have to do it pretty instantly in order to recover, otherwise you will just die, even though this move is very good in kills. But if you go too far, you just won't make it back, like just a little bit too far, and suddenly she's dead. Right? So you have to be very, very careful when wanting to edge guard as Mithra, but the single hits can be very good, and of course she does have the super low commitment of her up B into the uh, multiple sparks, which is very good for, it's, it's really good against a lot of characters to just continually do this. Like, it can just kill, like, kind of easily, especially if people get caught out without a jump, so I would definitely recommend it. And again, just maybe some like very simple forward airs to just like hit people. Just don't go too far because again, her recovery isn't the greatest and she's not floaty, so it's not going to work very well. And in terms of disadvantage, I'm just gonna show it by like, you know, footstooling the opponent because I'll be very high. So if you're in disadvantage and you get hit, of course Mithra uh, doesn't honestly have that many good uh, descending land op landing options. I would pretty, probably say Nair's her best one uh, because it does hit a little bit below her, but you can still definitely get hit for using this move. But of course, Mithra has foresight. So if you see people uh, swinging or like charging a smash attack, you can always foresight through it. And because she's a fast faller, you can actually fast fall air dodge. And if people are jumping at you, unless they are also a fast faller, you will probably be fine and not get hit. Of course, that can be red as it always can, like anything can be red. Uh, so be careful when you're doing it, not to do it too early or just like really pay attention to what your opponent is doing because otherwise you're going to give them free hits, and that is not good, especially with how squishy this character is, both her weight and offstage, because this character's recovery is very exploitable. Recovering her with her is pretty straightforward. Uh, you do have the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the air dodge tech, because her air dodge is actually more invincible than most, where you can grab the ledge uh, invincibly. But again, just her up B, learn the spacings for it. Side B, if you really have to, because Again, this move is very punishable. People can just spike you out of it. But at lower levels, that's probably not going to happen too often, especially considering how big the hitbox is. So just make sure to know the spacing. Don't do it too low or you're gonna die. Understand where she can snap to the ledge because if you do it a little too early, she's just gonna die. Pyra's neutral is a bit different because she doesn't have that speed, so she's going to play a lot more like a traditional swordy, where she has her amazing tilts. Like, her tilts are actually incredible. And she does have things like her fair is very safe. I think the frame data, even though it's uh, slower, is still safer than Mithra's. And because her sword does more damage on, like, shield, it will push people back a little bit farther, so it's a little easier to use moves safely as this character. However, you don't have the crazy just like run up super fast options because since her moves are slower and take longer, even though they are a little bit safer, they're easier to react to. Whereas Mithra's, you know, down tilt isn't as safe, but you have to really be aware of like, okay, she's going to run up down tilt right now because if you don't react to it, you're gonna miss the punish. And of course, her nair is a single hit, so it's not exactly going to be good like as a rising aerial because if you just shield it, they're just gonna hit you. 
Of course, the better thing about her neutral is the fact that she has Scythe, and at lower levels, this move is going to be broken because people will just try to run in, and so they're just like running in. Let me put Mario to like controller or computer or something. So they're gonna be running in and you just do this, and it works all the time. At higher level, it's gonna be a little worse, but again, this is a beginner guide, so I don't wanna worry you about all the counterplay and stuff like that. So a lot of the time in neutral with this character, you're going to be taking as much space forward as you can and walling out with your forward tilt and your forward air. For the most part, you can also do some like jump baits and stuff because if people swing early, of course you can get down air, which is going to be the best combo move on either Pyra or Mithra. Like literally, down air will combo into anything at so many percents, whether it's down air nair, down air up smash, down air forward air, down air down air maybe? No, wait, let me try. Yeah, down air, down air. So if they like DI out or something at the ledge, you can just which is kind of insane. So again, her neutral isn't going to be as aggressive as Mithra because she's just that much slower, but her moves still definitely have use. Like, oh, just her moves are really good at just swatting opponents away. And so that's going to be the main game you play with her. You're going to get into mid range and then force people to guess if you're gonna like dash forward and do a grab because that combos, maybe not at 50, but like in general. Or if they're going to swing, you can like back dash and forward tilt or just jump back and forward air even doing like an immediate uh forward air into backup is pretty good because she does have like pretty decent aerial drift because she's a bit slower falling and by a bit i mean a lot slower falling than uh mithra so you can just very easily just like drift out of people's ways so yeah just mostly just playing with your sword aerials and then run back side b like side b is still hard to punish technically because of course you still have the options to like air dodge and roll away and do these type of things so people will still have to have a read on you after you you know miss the side b if they do jump over it so it's not exactly easy to hit you but it is still risky obviously but the reward is great i mean this move does like 30 percent for like no reason in terms of combos mithra's combos are going to be very simple very like three hit combos at most she has like down tilt into nair down tilt into up air whoops i messed up down tilt into up air down tilt into fair, these type of things. Very, very simple bread and butter combo. Same thing with grab, down throw up air, down throw fair, and that's gonna mostly be it. Uh, her other tilts are not combo tools because they are way too slow. They're mostly killing tools, or just like, you know, get the single hit and just playing neutral that way, but they're not a combo tool. Of course, the best combo tool that Pyra has is down air. This move combos into everything at like all percents, at zero it combos into grab, which is just going to lead to a ton of damage. Like look at this damage, like 40, for no reason. Of course at higher percents, before it starts, you know, popping them off the ground, it still does. Although now you can get down tilt, which is really good. So 35 damage combo, super cool. Like, it's just, she just does so much damage. The damage that Mithra doesn't have, Pyra gives out in spades. And of course, when it starts spiking, it combos into like super everything, where you get down air into up tilt, you get down air into up smash, you get down air into forward air, you get down air into nair, and I'm gonna just replace those. You get down air into back air. The, the best kill confirmed for this character is definitely just down air into up smash, and it has a pretty wide range of it working. And then if you're out of that range, you can just kind of down air into up air, and it'll kill. Like that's definitely still a kill confirm. So Downer is just a really good move in general. And of course, uh, because it's a huge sword, it will hit really well off stage because it just goes like through the ledge and will just hit people trying to recover like kind of easily. Like I've hit a lot of people from on stage. For killing overall, Pyra does not struggle to kill. Basically everything she has is a kill move. She has up B. She has her aerials are basically all kill moves. Like that was from almost center. Her F tilt is a kill move. As I mentioned, her down air combos into like everything, her up air is a kill move, all of her smash attacks of course are kill moves, especially forward smash. So she'll just kill you basically with no effort. Back air, uh, back air and uh, B are very DIable, so sometimes it'll kill at like 70 and sometimes it won't kill until like 125, just be careful. Uh, but either way, they're still very, very good moves catching your opponent unaware. The one thing other than killing that I will say is objectively better about Pyra is their edge guarding. Because they're floatier, they can wait out for much, much longer than Mithra to get these hits. And also, of course, like, the aerials are stronger, so 
you know, edge guarding has more of an impact for Pyra than it does for Mithra. Like, that still kills. And Mario was at, what, 80? 82? Something like that? Again, I will tell you as a pitfall that I fall into as well when I play Pyra, don't try to spam down air. It's not safe on shield, and even though the reward you get is incredible, you will get hit for it, and the thing about Pyra is her disadvantage is worse. I talked about Mithra's disadvantage, and it's like not great, but she has foresight, and she has, uh, you know, a fast fall air dodge because she's very fast folly. Pyra is not. So if you fast fall air dodge, there's a ton of characters that can just throw out an aerial and then hit you for landing, because it's not that fast. So be careful and disadvantage. Of course, you do have the ability to just swap into Mithra, but I'm trying to, you know, talk about them in terms of just like them being themselves. And of course, they are intertwined, so you can do plenty of cool things, whether it's switching and there's like, you know, text about like running off and switching so you can get edge guards and stuff like that. But I'm trying to just talk to them as two separate characters, because especially as a beginner, you want to play them each individually, or at the very least, very simply, I'm going to play Mithra at lower percents, and then my opponent gets to like 80, and then you switch to Pyre to try to get the kill. So in disadvantage, you're going to have to be a little bit more careful. Something sneaky that she can do is when she gets hit off stage. Let me move Mario so I can put some... When you're off stage, you can use your side B as a way to deter someone from edge guarding you. Even though you don't have access to your up, you still have your air dodge, and you still have your double jump. So one thing you can definitely do, you're falling, you can definitely do side B, kind of occupy the ledge, and then recover safely. Are there ways to get around this because they can jump past it? Yes. But it isn't going to be easy, and that requires a lot of forethought on your opponent's end, whereas this is just going to be a good option, and it's sometimes a way to recover that is safer than just falling and doing up B, because your opponent can run off with you and try to hit you before you can up B. Something that's very important is obviously her upbeat goes straight down. So you have to be very, very close to the ledge in order to get her ledge snap. Her, her ledge grab is pretty big, honestly, but if you are like slightly outside that range, you're just gonna die. Oh, I'm surprised. I'm honestly very surprised I made it. Okay, maybe it's a little better than I gave it credit for. It's, it's gonna be hard to recover because their recovery is not good and she doesn't have the luxury of a side beat like Mithra does. So if you are off stage with Pyra, one, I'd recommend just switching to Mithra probably for the most part. Uh, Pyra is a little bit floatier so she can, you know, move farther off stage because uh, she's going to be able to, you know, float closer to ledge, whereas Mithra can't. But if there are situations where like you don't have a jump, just go Mithra and hope they mess up when edge guarding the, with the, your side B because you're gonna have to do that. For advantage, it's going to be a lot simpler, kind of like, uh, it's gonna be Mithra-esque, but you're just gonna have to commit a little bit earlier, and you just have the power to scare people, basically. You're just gonna be jumping under them, and, you know, trying to bait them to air dodge, or just trying to swing if you think they're gonna land an aerial, or try to do, like, landing with an aerial. You, of course, have uh, a really good whip punish. If someone's, like, drifting away, like, let's say they're gonna drift like this, right, just, like, to the right to, like, try to land here, you can also, like, when you're just fighting them, just throw a side B to cover out, uh, to rather cover where they want to go. It's definitely pretty good, but it is committal, of course, if they react, they can just air dodge towards you and then start their pressure. So it's not something I recommend doing all the time, but it's definitely good every once in a while. Pyra has a more simplified game, because she's definitely just kind of wants to play like a sword character with like an interesting side B and a really, really good down air. But even then, like, I know Lucina players love to use down air, and it's probably a better down air than Pyra's, at least in my opinion. But Pyra's is still very, very good and great, great for combos and setting people up into, like, death, basically. So that was a lot of information. I know this is actually a particularly hard guide to do because there's two characters, so I apologize for that. Uh, if you have any recommendations for me that you think would help streamline it, please let me know down in the comments. But now, obviously, as you see, it's not the end of the video, so I'm going to be showing you some of my footage that I got playing her and trying to just utilize the things that I was talking about, granted, at a bit of a higher level, but enjoy. Ooh. I'm trying to get cross up, didn't work. Oh, that was amazing. Let's play Pyro for the whole time. I'm so safe. Yeah, you, you didn't really have an option there. <laughs> Why are you getting up into it? Yeah, 
You had so much lag that I punished you from across stage. Jeez. Do it! <laughs> like, look at this just overwhelming pressure, dude. It's crazy. I got a big sword, I don't care about your magic wings. Kill you. More mentally. Yeah. Dude, they're so they can just press buttons. Dude, I have no idea how to play this map. If I can't react and Foresight shit, I have no idea what to do. Dead. Just kill me. I was like, I'm just waiting. I tried to parry it. I should have just foresighted it. I'm alive. No! That's so low! That's good. It's really funny because fighting Isabelle is particularly upsetting for me because when this character just came out and I entered um, the Buzz's tournament, Galaxy Gambit, it was like, whoever goes the farthest with solo blah, like with, with solo them, gets money. And I lost to an Isabelle in pools. And I was just like, no! <laughs> like my winner's finals in pools, I think. Excuse me? Oh, finally got a downer up smash. How about the uh thing is still there? Oh lord. All the whiff punish? Under it? Is that messed up? But you know what I do. I am let me force it. Oh I went under the stage! Yes! Oh, let's go! Oh, that was stressful.